Hello everyone, this is Joe Rodriguez, and I'm going to be reading another brief excerpt from my book, The Book of Joseph, and uh, this is coming from chapter 4. As Joseph works and lives in Jerusalem, a decree goes out from the temple to all the unmarried male descendants of King David. All the sons of the royal house of David are to report to the Jerusalem temple in order that a suitable husband for the temple virgin, Mary, be chosen. Joseph, being a son of David, is required to report. Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich writes of one of her visions. When the Blessed Virgin had reached the age of fourteen and was to be dismissed from the temple, I saw that the messengers were sent throughout the land, and all unmarried men of the line of David were summoned to the temple. In the book of Genesis, the prophecy of Jacob states that the kingdom will be taken away from God's chosen people when the arrival of the Redeemer is at hand. The loss of the Davidic crown was the sign of the coming of the Christ. The scepter shall not be taken away from Judah till he come that is to be sent, and he shall be the expectation of nations. Genesis 49.10 this removal of authority had already happened by the time Joseph was born into the world, as the foreign king Herod of Ascalon had usurped the throne of the sons of King David. Nevertheless, Joseph remained the rightful heir of the kings of Judea. However, in the divine plan, Joseph was meant to serve the Lord as a worker and to hide and humble himself in domestic life, while at the same time being a nobleman. St. Joseph would have had perfect claim to the throne. St. Peter Julian Imard and St. Bernardino of Siena comment that though the throne was taken from Joseph's family, he was no less a king because of it. We will start with St. Peter Julian. Therefore, since Christ was king of the line of David, he made St. Joseph to be born of this same royal line. He wanted him to be noble, of earthly nobility. In the veins of St. Joseph, therefore, flows the blood of David and Solomon and of all the noble kings of Judah. If his dynasty still sat on the throne, Joseph would be the heir and would have sat on the throne in his turn. Thus, in the census records of Bethlehem, St. Joseph was inscribed and recognized by the Roman governor as the heir of David. Therein lies his royal title, which is easily identifiable and bears the royal signature. St. Joseph was born of a patriarchal, royal, and princely race in a direct line. The Gospel of St. Matthew establishes a direct line of all the fathers from Abraham to the spouse of the Virgin, clearly demonstrating that all patriarchal, royal, and princely dignity came together in him. The Sovereign Lord had deigned to make St. Joseph of royal blood, placing in him all the honor and glory of the house of David. Though St. Joseph's family no longer sat on the throne, he was still a continuation of this nobility. His was a sacred bond between an earthly prince and the ruler of heaven and earth. St. Joseph's royalty was not shown with an outward crown, but one which was hidden within his heart, a heart in which the Lord took great consolation and great delight.